Are you trying to figure out how to get one of your e-commerce products to show up on Google for a specific keyword? Well, if that's what you're trying to do, you have made it to the right video, okay? So, how to get one of your products to show up on Google for a specific keyword? In order to do that, we have to optimize that product page for the keyword itself. So we have to dive into keyword on page optimization. Okay, it sounds like a mouthful, but in this video, I'm gonna make it super simple. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, and tools to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you, okay? So in today's video, we're gonna be diving into on-page optimization specifically for product pages. So in the screen share, I'm going to be using Shopify to kind of show you guys around and explain where to put your target keyword. I will say in this video, I'm not gonna dive into SEO keyword research. That's gonna be a whole other video on its own. So if you wanna be notified when that video goes live, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's just get into the screen share. Okay, so for this screen share, I'm just gonna be using one of my old clients' websites here. And the thing is about on-page optimization for any page, whether it's a product, a collection, a blog post, whatever it is, on-page optimization is all about giving Google context clues about what the main idea of this page is. And typically what the main idea is, is revolved around the target keyword, because otherwise the target keyword wouldn't be the target keyword that you chose, okay? So for this example, the target keyword that we're gonna be working with is olive branch wreath. Okay, so the very first place that you wanna make sure that you're putting your target keyword on your product page itself is within the product title. This might be one of the single-handedly most important places for you to put your target keyword because in the back end of the code, essentially the product name goes in an H1 tag, okay? And so the Googlebots look for an H1 tag so that they can figure out what the main idea of this page of this post is, okay? So we definitely wanna make sure that our target keyword is in the product title. The next place that you wanna make sure that you have your target keyword is within the content of the page itself. Ideally, within the first two paragraphs, within the first 250 words on the page. So right here is where we added the target keyword. And we don't want to spam it, we don't wanna stuff it, we don't wanna keep regurgitating olive branch wreath, olive branch wreath over and over and over again so that the content looks super over-optimized. We want to add the target keyword in here in a way that feels natural, okay? Because the other thing that people kind of get lost in when it comes to optimizing a product page for SEO is that they start to get too, SEO focus and they forget that the whole reason that you have a product page is to get conversions and to sell the product, okay? So if we are over optimizing and overusing the word, not only will the Google bots be like, yo, y'all are getting too spammy on this. You are not the best solution to the problem for this keyword. We ain't putting you in search, but also the people that end up going on this product page, they're not gonna be enticed to buy it. They're gonna be like, this doesn't even read naturally and they're just gonna get annoyed and it's gonna lower your conversion rates, okay? So when it comes to putting your target keyword in the content itself, we want to make it sound as natural as possible while also making sure that we have it in there, okay? So we have it in here within the first few paragraphs. And then the next place that we wanna make sure that we have it is in an H2 or an H3 heading. So a really easy way to do this 
for product pages specifically is exactly what I did right here. So it's just olive branch wreath details. You can literally do this for almost every product. I don't care if you're selling gold watches or gold jewelry, you could literally be like men's gold watch details, whatever your target keyword is, and then put details. Because the cool thing about products is that in order to get users to buy them online, we usually have to give details because the user that lands on this page isn't gonna be able to pick up the product like they would in store. So for e-commerce, it's super important that you're adding specific details in here. And when you're adding details, especially in like a bullet point thing like we have here, it's super easy to add our target keyword in the H2 or the H3 heading. And then I know some products, some themes on Shopify, off of Shopify, whatever, some of them also give you space to add like a longer product description here. And so if you had extra content down here about the product, I would make sure that you're adding your target keyword again throughout the content. So if you're just like, Mariah, I don't know how often to say the target keyword without sounding space. Family. Usually us SEO people suggest not using your target keyword any more than once in every 200 words, okay? So for products, it might be a little different depending on how much content you actually have on the page, but just a good rule of thumb here. The other place that we want to use our target keyword is in the URL itself. Okay, so you'll notice that I have olive branch wreath up here in the URL. And notice that we are separating the words with dashes, okay? It does not look like this, where it's just like one word without any spaces or anything. The Google bots use the dashes as a way to see the spaces in between the words, okay? So that's why in between words, we always use dashes. We don't use underscores. Underscores, no thank you. Google doesn't like them, they look spammy. Okay, so there's a couple more places that we have to put the target keyword. Let's hop in to the back end so I can show you. I'm interrupting this video really quick because I created something super awesome and I wanna share it with you. So if you need help planning out your SEO keywords for your blog posts, for your product pages, for your homepage, for any page on your website, then definitely check out my SEO keyword planner. It's a five page editable workbook created in Google Sheets that will help you brainstorm, organize data and strategize your keywords accordingly. I include tips, best practices and examples to help you get started. Click the link in the video description below to check it out. Okay, so on the back end, we can see the product title, which we already went over target keyword is there. We can see the description target keyword right in there in an H2 or an H3 heading target keyword right in there. Really great. So then when we scroll down, the other place that we wanna make sure that we have our target keyword is in the alt text, especially of the main image of the product. Okay, so go ahead and click on it. Shopify makes this super easy. You just click edit alt text right here and make sure that we have the target keyword in here. Okay, so basically when the Google bots, when they're, when they're scanning a page in order to figure out like, what is the main idea of this? Where do we wanna put it in the index or the big filing cabinet? It's going to come across images, but the Google bots cannot see an image, okay? It's an algorithm, it's a robot. So since it can't see the image, it scans the alt text to be able to understand what the image is of. And e-commerce people, y'all have it pretty easy, okay? It's pretty easy to naturally include your target keyword in your image alt text. It just is because your image is specifically tied to the target keyword because the target keyword is specifically tied to the product. So we wanna make sure that we have our target keyword in the image alt text. We also want to make sure that this comes across natural. Okay, we are not gonna do olive branch wreath, comma, olive branch modern wreath, comma, olive branch modern wreath, forefront door, comma, like we ain't putting commas in here. Okay, we're just gonna tell the image alt text exactly what this image is of. If you're using commas and trying to keyword stuff, it's not gonna do you any favors. But the other really great reason for taking the time to customize the image alt text, especially for the featured image, is because once the Google bots know what the image is of, your image can essentially not only help 
give Google the context clues it needs to be able to figure out like what the target keyword is and file your product in the index accordingly, but it can also help you show up on Google Images. And e-commerce people, y'all get bonus points for this too, okay? So your product images, when people are shopping for things online, more than other industries, they are going over to Google image search, okay? So in order to show up in Google image search for some keywords, your image has to be in the index for that keyword, okay? So I know that's a lot of words, but hopefully that makes sense. So we're gonna scroll down a little bit. And the other place that we want to make sure that we have our target keyword, it's two places down here. So this is information that the user isn't going to see on the front end here. This is actually called metadata. But the reason why this is important is because this is the only information that users are going to see when your product shows on Google. Okay, so this right here in the blue, this is the SEO title. This is the meta description. And it's best practice for every single product, a collection page, a blog post, your homepage, whatever. If the page on your website, if you want it to rank on Google, it is best practice to customize the SEO title and the meta description. Because like I said, this is the information that shows up on page one. This is the only information that users see in order to get them, like entice them to click over to your website. So it's not good enough to just get on page one of Google. We also have to entice people to click from Google over to our website. And that is why your page title and your meta description is so important. So as you can see, we have Olive Branch Wreath, which was our target keyword. We have it at the front of our SEO title. Okay, so if you can, it's called front loading. If you can front load or put your target keyword in the beginning of your SEO title right here, that's best practice. If you can't, it's not typically make or break as long as it's in there. And then same thing for the meta description. If we can get it in the beginning of the meta description, that's great. But as long as it's somewhere in here, that's typically pretty good. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention here is the character limit, okay? So for your SEO page title, you have 70 characters. Try to use as much of the 70 character limit as possible without going over. And then in terms of the meta description, Shopify says that you have 320. You really don't. You typically have around 155 to 160 characters. So try to use up as much of the 155 to 160 characters as possible without going over. And then I will say, sometimes Google will choose to show its own meta description based on the content of your website. So sometimes it won't even use this, but I always tell clients it's best practice to get in the habit of customizing these, of adding your target keyword just in case, because otherwise Google is just going to pull the first few sentences like on your actual page itself. And sometimes that doesn't sound too enticing. Okay. So just to summarize where to put your target keyword when we are optimizing a product on Shopify. Okay. The first place in the product title. The second place is in the product description itself. You can repeat it a couple times depending on how long your product description actually is. The third place is going to be in the H2 or H3 heading using the product title or the target keyword and then adding details after. Usually a pretty easy non-spammy way to go ahead and do this. The fourth place is going to be in your image alt text. The fifth place is going to be in your SEO title, in the front if possible. The sixth place is going to be in your meta description. And then the seventh place is going to be in the URL of the product specifically. So like I was kind of hinting at throughout the screen share itself is that on page optimization for a product, for a collection page, for a blog post, for any page on your website, it truly is a balancing act. So we want to use our target keyword enough times to kind of give the Google bots context clues about what the main idea of this page is so that I could file it in the index 
which is a really big filing cabinet, it could file it in the index accordingly. Because if you're not in the right section of the filing cabinet, then when users go to Google and they're typing in their queries, they're typing in their keywords, they're searching for stuff, if your page is not associated with those keywords, you are not gonna show up in Google search results. But we also have to be careful to not over-optimize. And some clients are like, well, how do I know if I'm going to over-optimize? Go and read your content. Does this sound like you are very obviously trying to target a keyword and that if I looked at it, I would be like, yep, there's the target keyword because you mentioned it 400 times <laughs> because we want to avoid that. But being intentional about where we're putting our target keyword, like in those seven places that I went through in the screen share, that's a really good kind of guideline to kind of go off of in order to start getting in the habit of optimizing your products for certain keywords. And then just keep in mind that just because you're optimizing a product for a specific keyword, that doesn't mean that your product can't show up for other keywords. Okay, so when we're optimizing, we kind of just like to have a priority keywords that we know what to optimize for, but your product will naturally show up for other synonyms, other ways of wording that specific keyword. So for this example, the olive branch wreath, we could show up for olive branch modern wreath or natural olive branch wreath or just different ways of saying that keyword. So don't think that optimizing your product for a specific keyword means that you can only show up for that keyword. No, it just kind of keeps the optimizing a little bit more structured and a little bit more focused. And then once you get in the habit of optimizing products and you get a little bit more comfortable with it, then you can start bringing in like secondary keywords and synonyms and things like that. I didn't dive into that in this video. I wanted to keep it really straightforward. I wanted to keep it really practical for you guys. So with that being said, I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions or anything about Shopify, about SEO, about Shopify and SEO, definitely leave a comment below this video. And if you like the video, just give me a really quick thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next video.